Okay. So let's oops. Up, up. Why is it? Okay. So the topic today is the calcification of soft tissue. Calcifylaxis is the technical term. And we're going to be talking about how vitamin K2 helps with this mechanism. I wanted to give the example uh, that rapid aging of calcium is what we're all up against. Perhaps the most dramatic case of wife. So I've put her image here um, as the beginning of this presentation. Okay. So did NK2, uh, because we don't get a good food supply of it, and our bodies don't make it, but our microbiomes do. So when we look at the deficiency symptoms, um, amazingly, um, aging has a lot to do with the lack of vitamin K2. So wrinkles, um, stiffening muscles, mitochondrial deficiency, decreased athletic performance, osteoporosis, osteopenia, atherosclerosis, vascular calcification, diabetes, and some cancers. And we've got some uh, posting on that um, microbiome university page so that you have all the references. So what are those food sources? Um, a nasty tasting natto is one of them. Um, goose livers, organ meats, soft cheeses. Um, so if these aren't in your daily diet, take vitamin D3. When we look at the organ meats, particularly, you do get a MK4, but it's uh, a very short lasting, four to six hours. And you'll see some manufacturers that have MK4, uh, many of them are synthetic, but the natural ones, even so, it's very short lasting. So uh, the best form is going to be the MK7 in the natural form, such as the one we provide, and we're the only ones uh, that provide the chickpea instead of the soy derivative. So we have two different forms that we have our K2 in, the megaquinone formula, and the mile max. And we'll go over the, the difference between those. And as I mentioned, ours are fermented by chickpeas. And this was a huge problem, of course, as some of you know, when we uh, were out of source because um, there's only one major place that provides the, the chickpea variety. And um, that's why we had to wait so long to get ours back in stock. So the primary thing that K2 does, and we're going to go over the mechanisms more in detail at the end, but in general, K2 transports calcium into the bones and removes it from the soft tissue or blood vessels. A deficiency of K2 can lead to an increase in coronary calcification and cardiovascular disease. This affects the energy output, which is under the realm of mitochondrial function. Uh, we know that K2 increases cardiac output by 13%, improves blood volume, and improves muscle function. And we have a human clinical trial um, that itemizes those particular things. So here's a chart on the differences. When you look at the strength of K2, it's about the same, 320 mics versus 300 in the mile max. The under ingredients is what's the primary difference. Uh, megaquinone contains vitamin K1 because the body spares K1. So we put a little in there to stop the conversion of K2 to K1. It also contains magnesium and zinc. The mile max does not contain those three, but it does contain calcium pyruvate, which is not a calcium source. It is simply a carrier for pyruvate, and that is used by the mitochondria. The indications, Everything you see there, uh, as we already kind of hit on, and I do have references for each of those, uh, the cancer, cardiovascular diabetes, osteoporosis, male infertility, um, athletes, so forth. And for athletes, 
but know that everything that megaquinone does that's listed here is also what Myomax does. It's just our clinical study focused on the athletic performance part of it. So here is the actual published study of Myomax. It was done at UTA uh, by Dr. McFarland in the maximal cardiac output during exercise. And there were some other great findings uh, that were included, such as um, this estimated to take six to nine months of high intensity training without K2 supplementation to achieve the same increase in cardiac output. So you gain a lot of a benefit by taking it, um, both in the, you know, for exercising, um, those who exercise and those who um, moderately exercise. So there's a slight increase in the stroke volume and maximal heart rate in this test group, which is a good thing. Uh, so your heart just doesn't have to work as hard. So here's the calculation, how they calculate cardiac output. It is um, cardiac output equals stroke volume times maximal heart rate. And um, then there's some VO2 max calculations there, but the bottom line is you pump more blood with less energy. So here's the labels for the mequinone. Um, as you can see, the brand name mequinone gold, which is the uh, most stable form of K2 on the market. You've got um, let's see what other things in here to mention. Okay. And then the mile max label, a little bit blurry, but as you can see, it's just those two ingredients with, again, it's the menaquinone gold. That's the reps will go in when they sit down with you and, and go over. I wanted to include some more of the biochemistry. So I wanted you to see you know, the, the difference in the structure of vitamin K2 and K1, because I get a lot of questions, you know, about the difference. Um, and this is, this is important, you know, K2 is fermented by bacteria uh, in the gut or in food, in cheeses, um, and is in the bones and in, um, it gets into circulation into the muscle green leafy vegetables and uh, you're, that's only a hepatic it's only going to be found in the liver and it's the one that is involved with the blood clotting factors not k2 in fact k2 will help with uh, blood clotting issues okay so here's um you know as far as the chemistry of what's going on it's these gla residues that are um, within proteins of the blood clotting cascade. And uh, it's the GLA residues that allow the proteins to chelate calcium ions and thereby rendering an altered uh, confirmation of this biological activity of the protein. So I'm gonna show you in this diagram that this is where vitamin K2 works. It works by carboxylating, that's the, the chemical um, action that it's taking on this inactive form of osteocalcin to make it into the active form so that it can transport calcium to the bones. Okay, so in the whole cycle, you've got vitamin D that stimulates the growth of the osteoblasts with their bone building cells and it releases osteocalcin but it's in an inactive form so it's dependent on vitamin k2 to make it into an active form so that calcium can go into the bone vitamin k2 also helps with bone reabsorption many people can get the calcium into their bone fine but they lose it just as fast so um, it's good to know that uh, the vitamin K2 is going to keep the calcium in the bone and help with that reabsorption as well. This I thought was interesting to show you. That was in the bone. This is in the soft tissue 
where it's important to know that that matrix GLA protein function is also taking place in soft tissue. And um, what vitamin K2 does is increase this matrix GLA protein, and therefore it will decrease calcification. On the other hand, warfarin decreases the matrix GLA proteins and increases calcification. So, you know, this is a, in, important to realize uh, when you're, you know, trying to coach um, and advise you know, different clients um, on this mechanism. Okay, so how do we test for vitamin K2? I'm gonna go back to this diagram. There is a uncarboxylated osteocalcin that is available through you know, every mainstream laboratory uh, as well, you know, your lab cores and your quests. And this is an extremely important test because it not only gives you an indirect uh, measure of how much vitamin K2 activity is going on, but it is the most important test when you're looking for bone density, um, for hip fracture indication, and for longevity. Because remember, uh, the aging process is about calcifying. And if you can get an idea of how quickly, you know, the soft tissue is calcifying, you can you get an indication of um, how quickly they're aging. Um, and that is very dependent on vitamin K2. So another test that will give you a good indication is the calcium score. You know, remember, uh, we've evolved from looking at cholesterol as the primary cardiovascular indicator. Uh, then we went to the C-reactive protein. So we've got now what's more advanced is to be looking at this calcium score, uh, which is, is giving you an idea of how much calcium is built up in the vessels. And you can do that with a EBCT or a multi-detector um, CT scan. So what a, a lot of people don't know about though is that menaquinone, vitamin K2, as in the name indicates, is a quinone, much like ubiquinone, and it's very involved in the complex transport. It's going on about how much vitamin K2 is affecting the mitochondria. And um, you know, this is talking about um, how they measure ATP and mitochondria. They add some toxins to you know, the different cell lines that, that drop the production down to baseline. And then they add some um, activators that increase it. So then when they add a substance, they can tell exactly how much um, the substance, like if you're testing K2, is going to affect the mitochondria. So that's what they've done here. And they see uh, that vitamin K2 increases the energy output by 20 to 25% from that basal energy. And that's, that's huge. Um, so it has been said that vitamin K2 or CoQ10. So imagine, um, you know, that market on how many people are using that and need that and how much it's benefiting the whole cardiovascular world. Um, and then this is an article here uh, that's talking about muscle cramps. And there's, like I mentioned, there's more articles. Uh, I'll show you on this Microbiome University that I have posted on the different effects of CoQ, I mean, um, K2. So here we've got neuropathies, um, many uh, white papers are indicating that it's helping to regenerate nerves, which is huge. Uh, there's also a good study on Parkinson's. Um, and here we've got one on prostate, um, dental, um, a lot of applications for uh, you know, reducing dental caries, um, helping with fertility and testosterone. Um, so again, if you haven't got the link, I'm trying to put the Microbiome University link in all of my emails, as well as on the constant contact, and hopefully you received that so that you know every Thursday 
you know, where the link is. And there's some questions, you know, that I put on here just to, you know, see if we're absorbing the information. So um, let's go ahead and review those. Uh, what is the mechanism of vitamin K that I had mentioned? Um, and the specific definition here, I, I put it, uh, is a disease, a buildup of calcium in the walls of the vessels, preventing blood from flowing to the skin and internal organs. So, um, you know, that's the official definition. And the which matrix receptor uh, is vitamin K2 dependent? And that is the matrix GLP. And, um, you know, that's indicated there. And I, I have some, uh, I'll put the slides so that you have those diagrams as well to look at. Conditions of vitamin II deficiency. So, you know, we'd already mentioned that in atherosclerosis, uh, diabetes, um, you know, bone density issues, um, but also look at things like kidney stones, gallbladder stones, and high blood pressure, because that's what you're gonna see clinically, um, you know, so real obviously get affected. And, um, yeah, so I've got some references there for each of those. And then we talked about you know, how you test for vitamin K2. Uh, that was through the, the uncarboxylated osteocalcin and the calcium scores are two of the, the easiest ones there. And um, so I've got, got those. And there's some, you know, the indications uh, we'd already mentioned, you know, of vitamin, two to, vitamin K2 deficiency you know, like the, the blood pressure and so forth. Um, the difference between megaquinone and Myomax, that was the ingredients. There's some K1, some magnesium, and some zinc in the megaquinone, and there's some calcium pyruvate in the K2 in the Myomax. So you see that there. Um, the uncombined uh, osteocalcin and the calcium scores, signs of improved um, K2, well, that would be, you know, if you see kidney stones dissolve, if you see um, blood pressures drop, um, if you see neuropathies get better, um, you know, seizures, you know, those type of things. Um, uh, signs of improved vitamin K2 store, that's, that's what I said there. Okay. Um, and, well, yeah, if you, the cardiac output, that's what we're seeing in the study, if, you know, for athletes, uh, for performance, again, they'll uh, you know, be able to work out less and get better um, results, uh, increased blood volume. So then you're getting more oxygen and more nutrients uh, through the body. And this is pretty dramatic. You're increasing blood volume by 900 liters, you know, in the cardiac output by 13%. And then you're increasing that mitochondrial respiration. Um, so that's, you know, the, pretty much what I wanted to cover on the science. And uh, next week, I was going to cover the myth-busting probiotics and really going through the difference between our probiotics and the, really the misconceptions that's out there in the marketplace. So I'm going to take everybody off of mute and open it up for questions. Oops. Unmute all. Okay. So hello, everybody. Hi. Who's, who's going to... Hi. Any burning questions? Anybody using the K2 out there have anything to report? I used to, uh, um, Ken is here and he's kind of my <clears throat> guinea pig out in the field and he's um, been using K2 for two and a half years and um, yeah, he's seen some things. I don't know. Do you want to talk? You want me to just tell him? No, you can go ahead and tell him. That's okay. <laughs> um, you know, he's had a, a client that came in and said that there was gravel in the toilet. And thank you very much. He was able to pass some kidney stones with minimal pain. Um, so if you've known anyone that has had a kidney stone, any males that you, in your life, um, it's not a pleasant experience. As some people have said, it's probably a man's closest experience to giving birth. So um, 
that's it's always a good thing when we can when help on that front. Also, he's seen plenty of times where the K2 has helped lower blood pressure, which makes sense because you're, you're you know, dissolving the calcium plaques out of the vascular system, then the heart doesn't have to work so hard. So the blood pressure will go down. He's also seen calcium scores go down, which, which all makes sense when you're improving uh, you know, the, the K2 stores in the body. So anybody else have some clinical pearls they've seen in the field from using the product? Um, I have. Okay. Um, Go ahead. And you want to? Um, you need a video. Hi. <laughs> if you'd like, I always like to see everyone's face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did a hair analysis where my calcium. Um, was very high, close there to what is. they call a calcium shell. And by taking the K2, yes. um, I actually lowered it back down to a, a reasonable level. So, so it's putting the calcium back into where it needs to be. Excellent. Excellent. And as we've seen with all this information, that's really important for your overall health for many reasons. Yeah. Good. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Any other brave folks out there to put your video so we can wave at you? And don't worry, I mean, my hair's still wet from the shower. You know, there's no beauty queens here. <laughs> okay. Well. If there's no more questions or comments or sharing, we can go ahead and wrap it up with a, a short meeting. Was, did, did everyone like the uh, presentation? Anything you'd want changed in that? Or you know, did I talk too fast? Or did you get good reception to hear everything? I think there's a chat on here if you, if you would like to rather, if you'd rather type. Oh, okay. I see someone's already put in a message there. Hey, Karen, good to hear from you. Okay, so, yeah. Doesn't look like anyone's typing anymore. So, well, thanks, Sheila, for being brave. And thanks, Karen and Amanda. I'll go ahead and sign off. And we'll see you all next week, I hope. Okay. okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, you're welcome.